Now, I've been wanting to play this deck on the channel for a little while now. I even filmed with it uh, in the back end of Lost Caverns before Outlaws came out. And I was so sick and tired, like literally sick and ill, that I was like accidentally spending the twinning people and it wasn't the best video quality. So we'll get Corridor Monitor. We'll cast Corridor Monitor. It will resolve. It will untap Sahili. I'll then go blue and red. Activate Sahili, target Corridor Monitor. Oh, I tapped the wrong thing. It's fine, we get two copies of Corridor Monitor. One will untap Guild of Lotus. One will untap Sahili. I think we have infinite mana. Yeah, I think we have infinite mana. Triple blue, activate Sahili, copy this. Make two copies of Corridor Monitor, untap Sahili, untap Guild of Lotus. This is just a loop, triple red. Make another copy, untap Guild of Lotus, untap Sahili. Make two more corridor monitors. Target Sahili with one. I'll get the Lotus with the other. I was wondering if I get cute and like untap and make a Gala Greeter. Triple red again. And then we're gonna activate with this monitor again. Untap Guild of Lotus. Good game. We got there. I fumbled my way through that. But that's Sahili for you. Copying other people's shit is fun because you get to then like do things that your deck shouldn't be able to do. Like Splinter Twinning people. So I'm back now with Sahili and she is bringing something special with her this time. She's bringing all of the big score. Or at least the majority of the big score. Some of the hottest bits. We've got transmutation fonts to make ourselves some tokens and then sack our tokens to go find any artifact we need in our deck. This includes sacking the artifact tokens that, trans that Sahili creates. I should probably explain what she does. Two mana on tap, create a copy of a creature or an artifact that we control. If it, it's an artifact in addition to its types, and then it gets sacked at the end of turn. So we're going to be copying things for value. You play a little bit of interaction, your wash aways, your mana drains, your brothers' wars, your sweltering suns. I've actually cut bolt, but I've kept a braid. And then we've got combos like Paradox Engine, Aether Flux Reservoir, and all that jazz. But mainly it's to fuck around with the new cards. World Waker Helm, a three mana card that whenever we make any sort of token, we get an extra map. And then for two mana, we can tap it to create a copy of a copy of a target artifact token we've just made. Oh, we're going to be copying our copies. Next up becoming is probably my favorite of the big score. A six mana artifact that draws you a card each combat step. Once you draw it, you can choose to exile a artifact or creature from your hand. If you do, you make a 3-3 three, three golem copy of it. If any of you have been following the channel, watching my Kalana content, or watching my modern content over the years, you know I love making me a golem. Especially if it's a golem that's a copy of a Paradox engine or similar. I don't think the deck is super strong. I think if you want to win games of Brawl, you really should just play like your Golos value engine bollocks. But I think as far as a deck playing a weird niche, it has some incredibly fun games. If you're looking to pick up a single or seal product from the new set, you can do so via the link in the description below to coolstuffinc.com. Get 5% off your order, help support the show. Use the code Kenobi at checkout. With that out of the way, let's play some Brawl. Game. And in the words of my father to my mother on his wedding night, Looks like we're in. This is a dog shit hand though. So we're gonna mulligan. Three lands, can't complain. We've got a wash away as well on our opening hand, which is pretty good. We're up against Yorion, so we're against value.deck, no doubt. We're gonna lead with an island. And we're gonna pass the turn. I'm making Mindstone on my commander on turn two. I'm probably making Mindstone. I'm gonna get Lorien's revealed here. Go and grab ourselves. Uh, what are the Skylands for turn three? Oh, really? We could have held on to Lorien revealed because we never get any more action. But I'm pretty convinced we'll find some form of action. Let's go Treasure Vault, let's go Mine Stone. Actually, yeah, should have went Mountain, because if we draw another Red Source, we could have cast a Tushi. And I didn't, that's fine. We were not punished. So we're going to go Thundering Falls here. Trigger, put Swearing Suns on the bottom of our library. Or into the graveyard, we don't need it right now. Three mana left, we're good, we're going to pass the turn. Next turn we can cast a Tushi, or we can play a land and play Goldspan Dragon, which is probably where we'll be at. Hitting them and making some treasures. They're playing Circuit Mender. From the looks of Ickle Wells being plus Circuit Mender, this feels like they're playing what would probably be more like a Tashar deck in some ways. Um, obviously, these both have value ETB, so maybe it's just that, but I have a sneaking suspicion we've got some artifact combo going on here. Uh, they aren't casting Yuri on this turn, so we're going to slam them out in and get him with a Gold Span Dragon, which will make our mana big. The more mana we get, the more likely we are to cityscape level one of our lands away. Oh no, I forgot. It doesn't kill a land. It sounds like it should kill a land, but it doesn't. Because Wizards of the Coast are fucking cowards. Our opponent plays a Plains. Four mana. They're thinking. A long old think. I'm going to edit this down less than normal. So I'm going to be talking more than normal. I'm just going to be talking and talking and talking. I'm going to be thinking about things out loud. Like as I said there about... Hang on, what's this mean? No. <laughs> what a common occurrence online. Your opponent either has like the value-centric go-loss bullshit and stomp the shit out of you and you've got to watch it go if you want to make content. Or... They're playing a niche deck like I am, or something a bit more fringe. I don't know if you're into that fringe, but it feels fringe. And then they stumble on a land drop and just, like, commit seppuku. It's big cringe. Right, on to the next map. Another one.
And we're into Skitherix from uh, an opponent whose name is Nate Stradamus. Does that mean they know the future? We'll keep this. We've got a two mana ramp spell and two of my favorite magic cards of all time. Frixie Metamorph makes me hot under the collar. I love me a three mana clone. And Sea Double is one of my new favorite cards from the recent iterations of magic. What is this? Toxic? Oh, they're just full on infect. Comment section. I don't think we're gonna win this. Firstly, we're slow. Secondly, I just played the wrong fucking land. I meant to surveil. I played the wrong land and that was silly. Ah, oh, right, we'll go island into Arcane Signet. We want to copy this one to at some point. We need to kill that Bilus Skull Dweller. I guess making a copy of a Bilius Skull Dweller and then blocking the Bilius Skull Dweller with our Bilius Skull Dweller. That seems pretty cringe though, right? They play a one drop and we have to play like four, three, three mana on two life to block it. Gix is going to draw our card here. They are off to the races. Good start from them. We draw an island. Uh, so we've got four mana this turn. I guess we could make a copy of something else. At instant speed with C double. But next turn they're casting Skithrix, right? So is there any good line here other than copying their 1-1? One, one? Block their 1-1. One, one. I mean, I need to be more scared of the Skithrix, but I need to deal with this at some point. I need to draw some removal and a braid, the new Legion creator thing. Okay, we're gonna pass the turn because we've got instant speed copying of a thing. You also copy any spell they cast. This could cast something really crazy. God, these, these sleeves are noisy. They're cool though. Keys to the archive. Yeah, I'll have one of those. Sure. I fucking, I fucking love this. I love C double. I think if you're playing Commander or Brawl or anything, really, you need to be playing this. Um, Electrolyze is pretty decent. Kills the Bilius Sculptor, draws a card. Um, we'll just guard an island. We get to untap with our keys to the archive before they do. Also, we can copy keys to the archive like every turn off of uh, Sahili. It'll, it'll, it'll come in tapped and be summoning Zik, but we get to draft from it that way, which is pretty strong. They put a abnormal endurance into the bin. They have ways to recur creatures that die. Okay, they're draw two cards of Gix. Jeez, we're on three infect now. Swamp from them, Eater of Virtue from them. We draw a Worm Cold Engine. We have access to six mana, seven mana with our land drop. I'm gonna cast Sahili to begin with. Then I'm gonna cast a Metamorph. I'm gonna pay too long. Auto pay. I'm gonna have it enter as a copy of Keys to the Archive, I think. We're gonna draw from that book again. We find Doomblade. Claim the first one and destroy a I think I take the Day of Judgment, honestly. And we'll discard this mountain. We'll go Thundering Falls, Surveil. Surgical Metamorph on top. I'm okay with that. So I'm probably just waiting for them to cast Skithrix and then killing the world with Day of Judgment. I'm also happy just to throw Sahili under the Billy of Skull Dweller here to reduce the Toxin count. Uh, yeah. I'm not happy about immediately playing my commander and then having to blow them up with Day of Judgment, but that is what it is. Okay, this will allow us to get rid of this fucking Skithrix. Although there are only one land off we have to recast on the following turn. I guess we can copy a keys before we blow up Sahili. Oh shit, I forgot it can gain haste. Oof. I forgot that was even the thing that Skith Skittles could do. Okay, so we block here. We go to seven in fact. Put her back in the command zone. They draw two cards. I mean, we can copy their Skittles and try and block it. But if they have a removal spell when we just die, so that's bad. Like double white, blue, blue. We're gonna wrap the board. Blow up all creatures. It removes a mana from their from their options too. Oh shit! This isn't Wrath of God. This is Day of Judgment. Fuck! I'm getting blown out by all the lines of text. It's all relevant. It's all relevant all the way up, baby. They're saying good game, which is funny because I've got a blocker. So we'll play a blocker. We'll draw two cards. Pass to them. Meteor Golem can destroy Skithrix if they don't have the mana to regenerate, but they do and will forevermore, most likely. So they have a kill spell, they do. Okay, good game. Okay, interesting game in the sense that we all know what Skittles does, except when you don't, right? Except when you haven't seen Skittles in about a million years, and then you just forget that it has all these relevant lines of text, and that this fucking thing, this key to the archives, does not find you Wrath of God, which says cannot be regenerated, and it gets you Day of Judgment. Oh, I got done in by wizards like Power D creeping Wrath of God. 15 years ago. It will never stop haunting. Another one. All right, we got some lands. We got some spells. We got mana key and nothing to do with it and no three, two mana play. We're into Nahiri, which has been alchemized. So this makes one one warriors. You may attach an equipment to them. Look at the top six cards of your library. Take an equipment or a warrior from them, put it into your hand. And her minus three is deals damage each. Chunk of creature or planes will get equal to twice the number of warriors or equipment you control. Sounds aggressive. This does not look aggressive enough. Although we can play our commander and copy spell bombs. Yeah, that seems fine. Hello, good luck. Nice, they say. We're up first. Let's go for a surveil. Islands at the top. Yeah, never didn't have it, as they say. 
mountain from my opponent. Beam, beat down, beam town, beam town, beat stick. It's the only one that hits you, it makes a treasure. We'll go island into, I guess we'll go island into Sahili here. It's not ideal. I really fucking hate playing my commander on turn two to then have it just like killed and then you don't doing much. They play a body and we're fine. That's what I don't like doing. We're gonna go island and we're gonna go, I guess, Aether Spell Bomb. And then what we'll do is, in the end step, we'll make a copy of it. Am I attacking? Yeah, I'm attacking. They equip this and attack us for a bunch, and that's fine. Oh no, what am I doing? No, chat! Comment section, I meant to copy my fucking spell bomb and I attacked. Oh my god, that's two punts in five minutes. I'm on an absolute fucking roll over here. It's fine, I can recover from this, but that was dumb. I wanted to make another spell bomb to untap with it so I could at least draw a card or bounce that creature. Because bouncing creatures that have equipment on them is a huge tempo game. They got a 4-3, they're coming into the red zone, they're gonna get a treasure off this. Do you know what? I'm just gonna say no. I'm about to back to their hand. No treasure for you. you gotta replay your character. Your character doesn't have haste. Go to my turn, sure. Um, I'm all right with this. Um, let's pay two life for steam vents. Play any fuck fucks of what. Go to combat attack them too. And pass back to them. So we've now got Reservoir, which I just draw for the top. Uh, Land of the Top gets us Might Stone, which will kill their creature again and put us miles ahead. Otherwise, we're going to set up for some combo turns. They kill our commander. This is this is fine. What does this do? Top creature player, look at top X cards, X is excess damage. You may X one of those cards. Yeah, sure. So they X out of planes. They're going to play the planes now. They needed that white mana. But we answer up and find a mountain. So we're going to play a mountain. We won't play Meek Stone right now because we probably want to kill like one of their creatures. So, I think we might just be recasting Sahili. Yeah, let's recast Sahili. Gain a life. Cast Manifold Key. Gain two life. Like, Aether Flux Reservoir might just be a big life buffer for us this game. Especially if I go, like, copy Aether Flux Reservoir with Sahili. Copy Aether Flux Reservoir with Sahili. Copy Aether Flux Reservoir with, with, sorry, with Molten Duplication. Then with World Walker Helm. And then cast a spell. And then I gain some amount of life. They play an Iron Crack, which is a mana rock that basically every deck should play now. Two mana, mana rock that makes colorless. Powerful stuff. You're gonna go one one warrior. Auto equips and equipment. Sure. We drew the iron crack that everyone should be playing. I guess I just might stone them. Because might stone can kill their creature. Punch Nahiri for, for two. Play an iron crack. Seems alright, doesn't it? Seems okay. We can copy it to draw cards the following turn and kill their stuff. So I'm gonna kill this warrior. Play the Iron Crag, go to 29, and use Sahili. I feel like I'm playing control when Sahili's like the aggressive like commander in the in the command zone, like the Geist of St. Traft sort of effect. Where you play a load of cards that like control the game and you just use the commander to, to beat down. Except Sahili's just a fucking bear. If, if you ignore her text box, she's just a bear. A bear that sculpts robotic dinosaurs, but a bear nonetheless. They're gonna exile Sahili with uh, Nahiri here, which is annoying. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. We'll take action and put her back in the command zone. They cast Champion of the Flame. They make a token that gets the equipment and they pass back to us. Okay, we're going to untap. And we are going to play World Waker Helm, which will gain us a life. We've got Zealous Conscripts, which will be useful next turn, I think. We're going to put a mana in, mana for key, untap this Meek Stone. Which was dumb, actually. Oh, I guess you can activate World Waker Helm. We're going to go make two colorless. Molten duplication, the meek stone. Yeah, cast a spell, get some life. We'll keep the we'll, we'll keep the the new one, and we will draw two cards because we need something. We'll then make two more mana. We'll activate the world waker helm and copy our meek stone. We'll keep the new one. We will, I guess, draw two cards. I'm then going to play... I will play Lander, yeah. I'll play Metamorph, Paying the Life. I guess we copy Reservoir? Yeah, we copy Reservoir. Play a Springleaf Drum. Go to 41. Play a Spire Bluff Canal. And that's it. We did a load of stuff. I took a lot of game actions. The great thing here about having mana, well, the problem is that they're saying good game. They, they got us. They're saying nice and good gaming us. Are we dead? Did I just take a load of game actions and die? I mean, I had fun on my turn. Um, the, the, the downside of... Um, uh, having mana that's like fucking meek stone mana is that zealous conscripts five mana can untap our commander and give it haste so like zealous conscripts plus sahili allows us to do quite a bit but not not with meek stone mana um okay they're, just, they're playing a lot of stuff i think they just realized that we're going to gain a load of life probably that's probably what they're saying you know so we can make a copy of meek stone every turn with warbreaker like helmet we have a token on board so yeah they're good gaming because i think they realize we're quite far ahead Wow, they got a colossal hammer they can stick to a... Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, we drew a flooded strand, which is pretty decent. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of... 
Okay, so I'm gonna make two men of Meekstone, and then I'm gonna make a copy of Meekstone. Like, you're gaming me. This is, this is really cringe. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, we'll keep the untapped one, obviously, and we'll draw two cards. That you're going me now as well, which is very, very strange. What a crybaby. What actual cringe crybaby. So we're gonna untap our World Waker Helm again, and we're gonna copy our Meekstone one more time after tapping it, and draw two more cards. We drew a Nexus of Becoming, which is pretty decent. And we drew Fabricate, which actually allows us to go get Paradox Engine. That's pretty good. Can't cast Paradox Engine this turn, though, can we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can, but we need a free spell. To... But we can make a Paradox Engine off the Nexus of Becoming, actually. So we go. No, we still can't do that. Oh, this is interesting. But we cast Fabricate. Gain some life. They're going to Yorgo us again. I'm absolutely fine with them Yorgoing us. I don't really care. Uh, then we'll go and get, go and get a. Uh, a br we'll get a Paradox Engine. We'll play Flooded Strand. We'll crack Flooded Strand. Grab an island. Three, four, five, six. We can go next of becoming. Gain a load of life. Go to our next phase, as it were. Exile any creature or artifact from our hand to make things. So I guess we go. Hmm. None of these do anything good. I guess Zealous Conscripts does become a three-three. That steals their core warrior and forces a block out of them, I guess. Like, we're like one mana short of just killing them, I think, by playing the engine and then casting a spell, but it is what it is. We're on 43 and they could easily do 43 damage if they have enough equipments, right? If they give something double strike. Actually, we'll attack Nahiri here. Next time we can copy this Zealous Conscripts because it's a token created by the, uh, by the Nexus of Becoming. So all, all of the parts, the World Breaker Helm and the Nexus of Becoming, all the things from inside the big thing, Mabob, they all, uh, work together like a Rube Goldberg machine. Okay, can you do 43 damage to me, opponent? You little crybaby with your, your going and your good gaming. Well, they're gonna gain a load of life. That's... Certainly something. Gonna put it on the Colossus Hammer creature to give it trample, to give it evasion through my 3-3 blocker. We can play Flowering of the White Tree to buff their entire team. Sure. I think we have infinite copy their stuff next turn, actually. Just Paradox Engine heavens. and the World Waker. I think I'm gonna steal every permanent they control. I think that's what I'm gonna try and do. They don't kill my Zealous Conscripts with their commander, which they absolutely should do, but I think they might miss that. Oh, they drew a oh, they drew a removal spell for it. That's a real shame. I was going to steal everything they control. That would have been absolutely sick. Okay, 16, um, 17, 18, 23. Sure thing. Go to 20. Well done, opponent. Well done. Well done, opponent. Good job, opponent. Uh, mountain. And then we're gonna make some mana, make some mana. Uh, we're gonna untap this Might Stone. They're gonna pause. And then we're gonna tap it again, and we're gonna cast Paradox Engine. I know. I mean, Paradox Engine for Swords of our Combo is not the most exciting thing. But I mean, we were doing other stuff, but our opponent was already being a twat before we started doing that. So we've now got this on the stack. It's now time to get salty, right? This I, uh, this I admit being salty about is probably reasonable. The earlier stuff was not. The earlier stuff was just them being a, a bit of a wet blanket. Now they're roping us. The historic brawl queue is really an interesting selection of people, uh, right? Like you've got you've got your people who are playing the like the absolute best of the best five color good stuff decks, which I guess if they want to. That's how they enjoy their spare time. Then I, I can't really criticize that. It's just not great for people who want to play niche and weird stuff. Then we have this. Well, they're playing a niche weird thing. I think this is kind of, this is quaint and interesting. I think playing warrior equipment type is interesting. But to like, now, to rope on Paradox Engine Aflux Reservoir, I mean, it's the closest thing I'll come to saying the rope is justified. This is one of those things that people do get bored of. But prior to this, I was just gaining life against Nagradek, spinning my wheels, World Wake Air Helming Might Stones. Like, what was not to like about what I was doing previously? But here we are. Rising Taku. You are the epitome of maturity on this platform. Um, instead of actually just... If you're really not enjoying yourself, your best thing you can do is, like our previous opponent, is just to scoop and go again. Or scoop and go do something else. Like, log out of Arena and go for a walk. I almost had to do this yesterday because the, the recordings went so badly. Like, doing this, where you, where you tab into another tab and just don't... Why? I mean, at least hopefully you are in a different tab. Hopefully you're in a different browser, just wanking yourself silly over some sort of, uh, some sort of lovely... Um, whatever you're into, you know. I don't want to judge you on that. Uh, it would all be hypothetical. There we go. Paradox Engine has resolved. We're going to cast Emery. We're going to untap all of our stuff. We're going to decline to take action there. Mill 4. Oh, there it is. The Legion Extruder in the bin. Um, we're then going to make some mana. Untap this Meek Stone. 
We're gonna make some more mana. We're gonna tap Emery for blue. And then we're gonna go ahead and copy the Meek Stone. I think we are now at a point where we just have infinite everything. So draw two cards. Find C double. The bin doesn't have eight cards in it, sadly, so we can't double two things. What of theirs can we copy? Because we just copy our own reservoir. That's probably pretty good. I want to see that on our own reservoir. Oh no, it's copy a spell, copy a creature, isn't it? We can't see double our own reservoir. I'm taking all the time in the world now because of how they were, were a moment ago. We'll make some mana there. And we'll just abrade. Destroy our artifact. We'll destroy the uh, Colossus Hammer. There we go. There you're going. I know it's my go opponent. If you don't like it, you can fuck yourself. <laughs> We're going to untap, gain a million life, resolve that. We're then going to tap for blue, tapping Emery. I'll make some mana. We'll untap this. We'll make some mana. We'll make some mana. We will then copy this. I want to draw two cards. Cyclonic Rift. <laughs> oh no! Come back! Rising Taku, where were you going? I was about to rift you. Oh, that's not fair. You're having such a fun time just you're going me when I was using my beautiful World Waker helm. Anyway, that was fun. I had fun. I don't know if you did, but I had fun. Another one. Right, once more around the Mulberry Bush, and we're playing the Garrett Graph of the Wilds, which I don't know what the fuck that is. What on earth is this? Oh, an alchemy Garrett. Four mana, four loyalty. Choose a good card in your hand, it gains perception plus one plus one, and gains a spell cost one less. Draft a card from Garrett's spell book, which can be a selection of beasts. It's the Factor skin there. Cringe. And then uh, minus six is overrun. Fair enough. Now, some of you are going to be saying, but Vince, I hate all the alchemy cards. I don't. I think the digitally unique cards are fun. Uh, we're going to keep these. I think changing cards, I've said this a million times, changing cards that already exist in Magic to do something that, 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 like other than what they already do, that's bad. But just having new cards that explore new space, I'm into it. I quite like it. Some of the designs are really, really fun. So we've played our taps, the events, they put a snow the forest. We've drawn World Waker Helm again. I think I'm just going to lead with Sahili here. Like without a creature on board, it's unlike the mono green deck can just one shot your, your commander because they normally need to fight effects, right? So... That's a that's one of the upsides of playing into the mono green or like the green blue decks. It's that if they are having a counter magic up, you can just slam a jam your commander. Prosperous keeper from our opponent. Pretty good magic card. Uh, let's go island. Let's go. Do I want to put a prosperous keeper? Gets me a treasure token. Maybe next turn. Hit a world waker helm. We'll get in for two. They're reading it because next time we can copy the world waker helm. Activate the map try and find that land drop because we're trying to hit land drops here. Uh, ideally, if they play a Mana Dork or a Mana Rock, we copy it with Metamorph. That's better than the Prosperous Inkeeper. Although Inkeeper giving us a treasure isn't the worst thing in the world. So it might, that might be the line that we end up taking. Ruinous' Monument to make their green creatures cheaper and they get in for one. Okay. So, turn four, we do not hit our land drop. So, well, Fable helps us make land drops. So we're going to do Fable. It'll make a token. Uh, World Waker Helm won't trigger because World Waker Helm only makes us maps when we make artifact tokens. It doesn't count for Goblin Shaman tokens. In for two. Missing a land drop is kind of brutal, and I'm kind of upset about it. Maybe we should be flex as we should be abrading this Ronus monument. Probably got mana drain for the Garrick is pretty good too. Okay, they're not playing Garrick this turn. I want to hold up that mana drain so bad. Holding up mana drain doesn't hit our land drops. Questing beast. Okay, Ronus's monument's pretty good. So in for like what is this? Ten? Jesus Christ! Where does get the bonus from? Whenever you cast a creature spell, if, if snow was spent on it. Get a counter. Guacamole, okay. Well, rough spot. We're gonna discard two cards here. We're gonna discard Cold on Monitor. And a braid. We hit a land drop. Let's go, baby. Mountain. Okay, so I'm meek stoning the questing beast. That's probably what I'm doing. Yeah, we get a map out of this to make like a treasure. We get a blocks, so this is fine. And then we're gonna go meek stone, sacking the treasure. Kill the questing beast. Lessens the damage we're taking next turn. Then we'll Ica Wellspring off of the Meek Stone, drawing a card, finding a land drop for next turn. Then we've got Legion Extruder to do some damage to a creature as well, like the Boreal Outrider. Is someone casting a green spell or a creature that this buffs? We're going to cast a green creature spell. So if they cast Garrick here, they don't get the, the trample buff. Because we are, we're not, we haven't got infinite life, right? Oh, we're going to get the buff though. 
They're going to play this thing. We have come up with two plus plus cows and another target could you control. Jesus Christ, that's good. Okay, that's another eight damage that's coming in. Sure thing, no blocks. Take eight. Now we want real damage control over here. So, transform our saga, give us a blocker. Play an island. Play a legion extruder. Shoot the boar out while it does two damage upon ETB. And then I'm gonna make a two mana. Do I copy the meek stone kill this? Copy the meek stone kill that? Yeah, I think so. So we're gonna keep this one. We're gonna minus five, minus five. This has got hexproof? Oh shit, the bed. It's even got the swirling Doctor Strange shit to tell me. I didn't even see it. I'll make two more mana there. So that's four. Um, we'll go make another Meek Stone. Keep the new one. Draw two cards. Make some more mana. Cast a Manifold Key. And then cast a Metamorph. What are we copying? I guess they're 4-4? Four, four? Puts counters on other things, though, so that doesn't allow us to block it very well. I guess we can activate Legion Extruder, sack a map, make a 3-3, three, three, and then we can map onto the 3-3? Three, three? I guess that's a thing. We keep Nexus becoming. I love that card. Make a 5-5 five, five out of it. Okay, we've got a blocker now. Could have actually done the other map. If I used the last mana for Manifold Key to untap the Meek Stone to then map some more, we could have got a 6-6 six, six out of it. Here comes a creature. Oh, they get trampled. Oh, shit. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. We have 7 power and toughness. Do we survive here? We survived it. There's no way they cast, like, 3 one ones, right? And give it plus 6, plus 6 or something. Trotsky's still going to grow it. Okay, that's 9. Counters on the Trotsky as well. Oh, wait. Are we dead? Oh, Trotsky doesn't have haste. Okay, 9 trampling damage. We block with 5. We go take 4, go to 2. Oh, yikes. So big. It's huge. It's fucking massive. Sure. Go to two. Biker rumba. That was brutal. Okay. Uh, Island. Make some Meekstone mana. So two, untap three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can play both Simulacrum Synthesizer and Nexus of Becoming. So we go Simulacrum Synthesizer. We're going to scry some stuff to the bottom of our library, I guess. I like this. This draws cards. We'll keep that. And then we'll cast Nexus Becoming. We'll move to combat. It'll make a 10-10 because it entered the battlefield. We'll draw a card and then put... I guess if we put Phyrexian Metamorph into play, copying the Simulacrum Synthesizer, we scry two again and we get another body. What else can we copy that's any good here? I guess copying Meekstone would make it summoning sick, though, but it would give us minus five, minus five to kill something. Yeah, let's go Metamorph. Metamorph's going to enter as a copy of... Meekstone. Keep this one. Minus five, minus five to... This thing, I guess. Get rid of one of the creatures. Make another 13, 13. Why is the Meekstone... Oh, the Metamorph becoming a copy of Meekstone overrides the original, um, become a 3 3 golem thing. Um, no attacks. Because we've got a reflection of Kiki Jiki ability here to copy a golem construct which will make us two golems because of the synthesizer it's four five reach trample they're gonna give something else trample here i think we've got enough golem to really like get in the way now as you can tell the powerhouse has been all of these ridiculous simulacrum synthesizers here comes garuk big boy as it were that's his name they're gonna draft a card from garrick's spellbook what is the best beast they can get? Is there a rare one i think every spellbook should have one rare one i mean it increases variance but i think it kind of makes sense there's now a 9 6. They're going to pass to attackers. Are they going to attack? I assume not. Okay. End of turn then. We will activate 2 mana. Activate Legion Extruder. Sack a token, I guess. Because I just realized copying the golem doesn't give us another construct off of the Seaman Atkins Sympathizer. Um, because it needs us to be CMC or higher. So we make a token on the map there. We untap. We draw a Fox of one, which is okay. It's okay. It's not, not too exciting. Um. We go Esoteric Duplicator, which is basically a super clue. Makes us a big dude. Then we go to combat. Trigger Nexus of Becoming. Disc Exile Aether Flux Reservoir. Make a 3-3 Golem version of it, which also makes us a map. We go to combat and we attack them with two 21-21s. Um, I don't think we have Rift Mana. Because we have five plus two Meek Stone, right? 
we have access to um, a World Wicked Helm to copy, at least extruded to make a golem. We have, basically, we have so many tricks up our sleeve at this point. It's actually quite, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and the world is of oyster, I might go as far as to say. Now, we could sack this to draw a card, pay two mana, so four mana total, get a, a token copy of it at the end. The token copy would trigger synthesizer, making us a, a, another good construct, and make us a map which will grow all our constructs. Is our opponent roping again? I'm just considering like uh, their options or something. I'm not really sure <laughs> what they're up to here. We can also copy any of the things down here with Sahili, by the way, which is pretty good because then we can like we can at this point in time with plus Sahili plus Worldbreaker Helm plus Key and one two three four five six seven mana so two four six yeah we can make three more Aether Flux Reservoirs and then cast the Conic Rift. Oh no, we're one mana short of doing that. They're roping us again. Historic Brawl. Like, I'm, I'm just doing cool things with artifacts. Why is that upsetting you? There's a reservoir in play, but it's not even part of the, the current situation. I, I, I admit I am talking to chat about, and the comment section here, uh, as I'm saying chat, I'm not live right now, but I don't want the comment section about using reservoir because it's exciting. But like, wh what's with all the roping, opponents? Is Sahili artifacts like fucking Rue Goldberg machine? that upsetting is this why everyone's roping me do you not like maps are you anti-cartography is that the issue opponent oh we're going to damage okay well I, I had a lot more a lot more love to give a lot more gas left i've really got the dog in me but our opponent didn't they're anti-maps anti-cartography they probably think the world is flat look i don't want to accuse my opponent miguel of being a flat earther but they did rope me, so all bets are off. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's just a look into how silly some of the big score cards can be. And we hardly even used our commander in these games. And we got a lot of salt from opponents. I think it was interesting stuff. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.